Hello Minecrafters, this is Seth and welcome to my series on redstone concepts where we will teach you how to be a pro redstoner. Redstone at its heart is often best thought of as electricity. In fact, if you view redstone as an electricity simulation, you can draw quite a lot of comparisons to the computer or phone that you're viewing this on. Computers these days operate in binary, that is, something is either on or off. Electricity is either flowing through the wire or it's not. By controlling the flow of electricity in this way, we've managed to build your computer, the iPhone, and even Minecraft itself. In fact, people have even managed to build full-fledged computers within Minecraft, and that is freaking crazy. How in the world does something so simple as just being on or off enable us to build all of that? That, my friends, is the power of logic gates. Logic gates are how we make decisions when working with redstone. All gates work in a fairly simple fashion. You have some number of inputs into the circuit. For most of our cases in this video, we're going to be sticking to two inputs, also known as Boolean logic. Each gate has a single output signal, which I'll often be representing here as a redstone lamp. Given the limited number of inputs and outputs, and the fact that each of these can only either be on or off, there is a, therefore a limited number of possible scenarios that we have to go over. The simplest signal is plain transmission. That is, for a single signal, if the input is on, then the output is on. If I flick this lever, the lamp turns on. If I flick the lever off, the lamp turns off. The inverse of that is known as a NOT gate, also known as an inverter. That simply says the output signal is the opposite of the input signal. If I turn the lever on, the lamp turns off. If the lever is off though, then the lamp is on. So if you find yourself using the word opposite when trying to describe what you want to happen in your build, this is probably the gate you want. The simplest form of a NOT gate, and the one most commonly used, is just a single torch. While the torch provides power normally, if the block it's placed on is powered, then the torch turns off. So to invert a signal, all we have to do is place the input into the block with the torch on it, which will cause the opposite output, and doing this takes one tick of delay. There are other ways of building NOT gates as well, though they are typically used in more advanced scenarios such as when we want an instant signal instead of delay, or if we have issues with our torch burning out which can happen if pulses on and off repeatedly very quickly, something that used to happen a lot in the older days of Minecraft but is not seen nearly as commonly in these days with the advent of new redstone techniques to get our desired behaviors. Next is the OR gate. This is when we have two input signals and an output signal that is on if either of the two input signals are on. So here, if I turn on the first lever, the lamp is lit. If I turn on the second lever, it's still lit even if I turn off the first lever. Said another way, the output is off only if all of the inputs are off. OR gates are commonly used in contraptions, for example a note block system that plays music anytime something interacts with several different machines without requiring a separate note block system for each individual machine. The opposite of an OR gate is a NOR gate, also known as a NOT OR gate. If any of the inputs are on, then the output is off. The output is only on if both inputs are off. At its simplest, this is simply an OR gate with a NOT gate on the end. It actually happens to be possible to build all other logic gates from the NOR gate. Next comes the AND gate. The output here is on if all of the inputs are on together. If I flick any lever, the lamp is not lit unless all levers are on. Often, when making redstone contraptions, we may want multiple things to occur before an output occurs, and the AND gate is the primary way of making that happen. For example, a combination lock where the inputs have to be exactly correct, or a keycard system where your keycard needs to exist in a specific chest and you also have to hit a button to activate. When you find yourself using the word AND in describing your contraption, this is probably the gate you want. The opposite of an AND gate is, you guessed it, a NAND gate, also known as NOT AND gate. This type of gate has the output off only when both inputs are on. It is an AND gate with a NOT gate attached. You may be familiar with seeing NAND in real life, such as when being used to describe an SSD, something that's commonly built out of this type of gate. The last gate that you'll see somewhat commonly is an XOR gate, which means exclusive OR. This is similar to an OR gate, but if both inputs are on, then the output is turned off. The output is only on 
if one of the inputs are on, not both. The most interesting thing about XOR gates is that because of how they work, any change to either of the inputs means that the output signal changes. This makes it very useful for implementing things like toggles, where you want inputs coming from multiple directions, such as a control panel somewhere in the middle of your base, but also having a lever next to the contraption to turn it on. You're probably familiar with these types of switches in your own homes, when multiple light switches are connected to the same light. As with all the other gates we've seen so far, there is also an XNOR gate, or an exclusive NOR. When this gate is used, the output is on if and only if the inputs are in the same state, either both on or both off. It can be built by simply inverting the output of an exclusive OR gate. And lastly, we have the imply gate. Here, the input gates are not treated as equals as they are in every other gate we've looked at so far. Rather, this gate will turn the output on if either both of the inputs are on or if the first input is off. This type of gate is used when we want to give preference to a particular input or if we want to force that signals be sent in a particular order. Suppose that we have a contraption that we've built. We only want it to run during the day, so we connect it to a daylight sensor. We don't want it to run at night normally, but we want to build a special lever that we can pull that can make it run even at night. We could then invert the input for the lever, which means that if the lever is on, the output is on. If the lever is off, then it would just use whatever the daylight sensor input says. Together, these are all of the basic logic gates that exist in Boolean logic, so every possible combination of true and false from only two inputs. For each of these, though, there are many different ways to build them. For each of the gates we've covered, I show here several other possibilities. For each type of gate, they all have the same function, but some of them may do it slightly faster, cost less to build, or be interesting shapes that could be useful in some of your builds, such as one or two wide alternatives. For the most part, you really only need to be very comfortable with building one to two of each of these. Once you know what they do and how they work, you can eventually learn to build your own, but at the very least, when, you're spe when you have special needs and one of the ones you know doesn't work, then you can look up alternatives and find them when you need them. You may even find some useful ones here in the world download. The most common situation in which you would need a different build is just because it doesn't fit into your planned design. This is especially common if you're adding redstone to an existing build and you only have so much room to work with. In these cases, it may be, it may be helpful to find one wide options, such as these, or purely flat options, such as this one. The other common situation where these things are useful, though, is when timings are important. Many of these gates, in their simplest form, take around two redstone ticks to process. Sometimes this isn't fast enough to fit into your design, so many variations exist they can actually do this in only a single redstone tick, such as some of the piston-based designs. Of particular interest are the so-called instant gates. That is, sometimes you want to make redstone decisions within a single redstone tick. These are not only offer fast performance, but are necessary in some advanced redstone contraptions and farms. For each of these gates, I've included at least one instant option, such as this instant repeater. Note how the output turns on or off in the same instant I flip the lever. It's worth noting that most logic gates can actually be made with combinations of other gates. I've shown this particularly in the instant versions of these gates. For an example, an instant NOT gate could look like this, and an instant NOR gate is nearly identical but with an OR gate in the front of it, and an AND gate is simply a NOT gate on each input fed into one of these NOR gates. This sounds complicated, and in fact it can get more complicated, such as this instant exclusive OR gate that is made from a total of eight NOT gates and three OR gates. You don't need to remember how to build these crazy instant gates, but remember that these can be combined to create each other. This is especially helpful if you ever get to designing your own gates later in your redstone career. What's important here, though, is understanding what the types of gates are and what they do. That way, when you've got an idea to work on and are trying to decide what components you need to solve, you can ask yourself, does this contraption require my redstone to make some decision? Do you have a particular concept you'd like to see in a future video? Leave a comment and I just might get to it sooner than you think. If you found this information useful, or if you want to see my next video on redstone concepts, hit that like button and subscribe to follow me in each new episode. This has been Seth, and I'll catch you next time.